Okay, good morning. Today is Tuesday, March 6th. Um, and I'm going to be doing a little experimenting with this video of uh, uh, laying in some, some graphics and images as I talk a little bit about um, what's been going on and what I've been uh, trying to accomplish and, 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 and learn about. I am in Wichita, Kansas this week. I was here last week. Um, I will have to come back with a, a later report and blog post about why I'm here and what I'm doing. It's a, it's a secret experimental treatment for now. But I, what I wanted to talk about uh, this morning is um, the amount of information I've managed to get from various tests that I've had done um, the last few months. Um, uh, let me preface this by saying that uh, last summer I, I was doing really well. My energy was phenomenal. I was um, doing some work on a, on a house that was being rehabbed and uh, just really feeling good. That was also the time I was doing an intravenous vitamin C, which I did not have uh, great success in changing some of the laboratory markers with it, but I sure did notice an improvement in my energy and my mood. And then sometime last fall, um, probably September or October, I, I experienced what I call uh, the fatigue hammer. I just um, was laid low. And I've had this, uh, uh, this has been the, the case more often than not the last uh, probably 10 or 15 years, though it predates that too. Um, so, so I, in an effort to uh, understand what was going on, I started uh, doing, doing some other tests. And I want to talk a little bit about those. Now, I've gotten a bit of flack um, from my AIDS dissident friends about being fixated on uh, the HIV uh, markers of CD4 and viral load. So I'm not even going to talk about those uh, at the beginning here anyway. Uh, I, I, I got a couple of years ago this uh, cyst in my parotid gland started acting up. It was about the same time as the Bell's palsy. This would have been early 2010. Though this didn't get bad enough to, to address it until the, towards the end of 2010. Uh, as a result of that, the first thoughts were cancer. Um, they even sliced me open and biopsied it, found no cancer. Then, then they were convinced it was tuberculosis and ran an enormous number of, of blood tests, including cultures of my blood, looking for um, a pathogen. All of those blood tests uh, returned indicating absolutely no evidence of any bacterial, fungal, or mycobacterial infections in my blood or in my body as far as the allopathic doctors were concerned and they wanted to cut me open again. I'm, I'm not going there again. Um, it's not cancer, it's not infectious, it's just uh, the new me. Though I, I'll, I admit it, it bugs me and I don't like it. So um, that was what I got from the, from the, the medical doctors. Um, going to my ortho, orthomolecular uh, clinic and doctor in Wichita here, um, one of the tests that I've had done a few times now is called the organic acid test and I've written about this before on my blog. This test for anyone who's dealing with chronic disease, illnesses, uh, whether you're affected with a, a gallo HIV diagnosis and you're having health problems, uh, you might want to look into this. It's called organic acid testing. I think uh, several laboratories probably do it. I use the Great Plains Laboratory in Lenexa, Kansas. Um, according to that test, I have high yeast and fungal metabolites uh, that indicate um, yeast and fungal overgrowth in my gastrointestinal tract. Those of you who follow um, some of the literature might be familiar with Tony Lance's paper on intestinal dysbiosis, uh, particularly in gay men who are also happen to be um, pos and affected. Uh, another marker indic was indic indicative, indicative 
of gastrointestinal bacterial activity. The tests revealed deficiencies of riboflavin and coenzyme Q10. Uh, evidence of Clostridia, which is a bacteria that uh, causes disease by producing exotoxins. Um, I had a very low uh, serotonin levels, which may be a contributing factor towards depression. High quinol, I don't even know how to pronounce some of these, so bear with me. High quinolinic acid is a sign of inflammation and or neural excitotoxicity. Um, let me, I'm going to step back just a second. In 2006, I had uh, a lot of neurological problems, and uh, based on an MRI, I was even diagnosed with early HIV dementia. Um, so, I, I, again, I have um, a history going back quite a while of neurological problems, um, and, and this is, nobody is detecting them in the mainstream doctors, but this test is saying uh, um, signs of, of inflammation and or neural excitotoxicity. Exo excitotoxicity is a process through which nerve cells become damaged because they are overstimulated. Um, my level on this test is, is considerably more than twice a high level of the reference range. Um, uh, then uh, uh, this other ratio, which I'm not even going to try to pronounce, would indicate would be indic indicative of immune overstimulation. Uh, my ratio on that ch is off the chart at 15. The reference range is less than 2.5. I hope you're kind of getting a picture here. I, th these organic acid tests are giving me more information about potential problems that that are affecting my health that I can address than any test I've gotten from an allopathic doctor or laboratory. One of the things that's very different about the organic acid test that I think gives it some value over blood work is that uh, organic acid tests are based on one's urine rather than on the blood. And while you can learn a lot by uh, studying what's being circulated in the body, uh, when you think about it, if you want to know something about somebody, uh, what's the best way to, to discover that information other than looking through their trash? So if you think of this as looking through what is being uh, thrown away or excreted, uh, the oat test does that by, by examining the urine. And I think it's uh, very effective at finding things that the blood tests uh, overlook. Um, also, according to the organic acid test, uh, th this ratio is commonly associated with excessive inflammation due to recurrent infections. Other causes of an increased ratio are immune overstimulation, excess adrenal production due, due to stress, and a high exposure to phthalates. I, I can pretty well eliminate the last two, uh, so the only one that is likely in my case would be the immune overstimulation. Um, and then another one that, that uh, suggests celiac disease, which is something that's sort of been showing up on my radar screen here in the last six months or a year. I, I don't think I have celiac disease. I do think there's evidence of gluten intolerance, and I'm, I'm working hard to get the gluten out of my diet. So I'm wanting to share this uh, as as information about some of the uh, give you an idea of some of the information that I'm having to process and try to understand. Um, another test that I had done recently was called an immune function test. It basically checked all my immunoglobulins, which are uh, just think of them as antibodies. And there's uh, roughly four categories of those and one of those categories has four subclasses. But, but my immunoglobulins are out of whack. Um, I also had an immunoglobulin test done in 2005, so I do have a bit of a point of reference. Um, my total IgG is, uh, is 3350, uh, up from 2612 in 2005, and that number is well over twice as high as the highest level in the reference range. Um, IgG is, one, is the one that has four subgroups. IgG1 and IgG3 are, 
are also equally elevated. They're, they're two to three times higher than the highest reference range. Um, IgA is only slightly elevated, IgM is normal, and IgA, I, IgE is nearly undetectable. So I, I, don't know what, I don't know what these mean. I need, a, need to find a, uh, an immunologist or someone who understands these things to help me interpret it, but um, it seems reasonable to me that, that they're correlating to the, or, the organic acid test of um, fungal and bacterial infections being detected, detected in my gut. Um, my last couple of uh, complete blood counts, in the last year my, my red blood cell and hematocrit and hemoglobin have, have really dropped. Um, and I'm going to be interspersing some charts on this video so you don't have to stare at my face all this time. If you need more time, just click the pause button if you want to study those a little closer. I'll also be posting them on my blood, uh, blog. Uh, I, I have some of these numbers going back 15 years, so I've always been a little on the low end of the red blood counts, hematocrit and hemoglobin. But the, a year ago, they dropped completely out of the bottom of the range, and um, I'm now considered anemic and wonder why I'm tired and exhausted. Then we did the uh, um, a test for adrenal function and discovered that I, I had this done a little over a year ago and things were things were okay with it. They were, they were a little on the low end but, but still within range. I was diagnosed with adrenal insufficiency probably 10 years ago and it was the start of a slippery slope of excessive drugging by doctors with, with my, my consent. Um, uh, they were treating it with prednisone. But, but this latest test uh, shows that my cortisol production is extremely low in the morning. So um, one, of the, one of the symptoms of, of adrenal fatigue is fatigue. So we have anemia, we now have anemia and adrenal insufficiency that could uh, be contributing factors. Um, so then, uh, on that same test, there's another marker that I've recently gotten really interested in. It's called SIGA, secretory uh, immunoglobulin A. Uh, you, you, you heard me refer to the IgA earlier um, based on blood work. This is uh, secretory, it comes out of the mucus in your mouth. And SIGA is the first, immune system's first line of defense against pathogens. And um, uh, while there's normally a, a reference range of 20 to 60 for that, my SIGA is very depressed at eight. Um, and, and a year ago, it was even lower than that. And there's another reason though why SIGA is of interest to me, and that is that it's, um, it is a, um, uh, it, it plays a role in immune interpretation for, the, for probiotic supplementation in the gut. Since, since one of the things I'm focusing on is gut health and looking at probiotics and, and ways to restore that, rebalance my, my gut and get rid of these fungal and bacterial overgrowth, the SIGA is a marker um, that, that can be used to help judge whether or not uh, I'm being very successful in that. The, the other test I'm still waiting for results from is a, is a stool analysis to actually see if it is able to, to give us a picture of what my, my gut biome really is right now. What's, what, what is high and what is low? Where, where, where is it imbalanced? And hopefully that would give us some information on how to move forward. I, I have to say, I'm overwhelmed, you know. I have too much information, and I can hear the critics out there right now, you know, shaking their finger at me and saying, I told you so. I just, I don't understand, my response to that is I don't understand how being ignorant and unaware of this information is useful or helpful for someone who is uh, hardly able to pull their ass out of bed for more than two or three hours. That's not much of a life, you know. 
to those on the other side of the fence who um, who just want to browbeat me into taking the AIDS drugs, then my question is, is, is uh, are ARVs going to cure my, uh, my uh, anemia? Is it going to reverse the uh, immunoglobulin uh, imbalances? Uh, is it going to, uh, you know, what was the other one that, uh, the adre- is it going to, what's it going to do for my adrenal insufficiency? These drugs are known to really be hard on the organs of a, of a body. And, and I challenge you to provide me with some evidence that AIDS drugs will improve adrenal insufficiency and anemia. You know, I'm going to address these core issues that I'm finding first. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about the AIDS numbers because they bother me. My CD4 count, I'm going to put up a chart here so you can see. My CD4 count has been in decline, and it's and it's continuing to decline. And I'm projecting. There's a red line in these charts that project where that's going if I don't reverse it or, or halt it. And CD4 percent also is declining. It's uh, now 14 percent, the lowest it's ever been. I regret that people like myself who are affected are limited to CD4 counts. There's a lot of other markers in my immune system that I wish they were tracking. What are my CD8? What are my natural killer cells? Doctors don't check these anymore. And and I'm going to start pushing to get those numbers, but I don't have the I, I don't have the same amount of reference that, that I have with the C D four. So I'm having to work with what I've got. You know, give me a little bit of a break here. Um, my viral load is um, it's through the roof. I, I've had to rescale the graph because of the uh, huge leap in January of this year, just two months ago. Uh, it's hard to see that there was a threefold increase in viral load back in 2010. The same time the Bell's palsy and this 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 glandular cyst was going on. Um, for those of you who aren't as familiar. The viral load, PCR viral load test is so, so wacky that um, the rule is that unless the count is either three times higher or three times lower than the previous one, it's insignificant. You know, how's that for, uh, for precise medical testing treatment? You know, um, I'm trying my damnedest to take all this information seriously. Uh, I've had trouble staying out of bed since September or so. Um, I know now there are several possible explanations, including an anemia and adrenal exhaustion. I'm also taking measures to attempt to re, uh, rebalance uh, the intestinal biome and flora in my gut. Uh, but I'm not going to overlook the HIV counts either. And I'm taking some rather unusual, if not uh, extreme measures right now to try to reverse the decline in CD4 and, to, uh, and the increase in the, in the viral load uh, without resorting to pharmaceutical AIDS drugs. Um, I'll, I'll be sharing more about that when I have some results. For right now I'm kind of keeping it to myself. So that's my update. I, I need to catch up on the blog and, and most of this is already out there. What isn't I will be posting soon. Um, as I can.